In early September, the historic trial of those allegedly behind the November 13, 2015 terror attacks in Paris opened. 25-year-old Estelle was among those who died in the attack at the Bataclan concert hall. Her mother, Marie, has come from Brittany to attend the trial. She will testify in October. What I want to say on that day is what happened on November 13th, but also what happened afterwards, the days that followed, the months, and even the years, because it changed my life and the lives of many others. These wounds have still not healed. Wounds that Marie agreed to talk to us about. Informed of the death of their daughter by her boyfriend on the evening of the attack, she and her husband headed for Paris. After four days of strenuous inquiries, they were finally called to identify their child at the Paris Forensic Institute. The secretary sat us down in the office and made us fill out some paperwork. We were asked things like, have you seen an undertaker? You have to deal with that. Will your daughter be buried or cremated? We were dazed. We didn't even know if she was there, and then we had five minutes to see our daughter behind a glass pane. We didn't hear from anyone after that for another week. Then they called us to collect her body. We were one of five families, all summoned at 2 p.m., all at the same time. We went into a corridor. There were five mortuary rooms in a line. There were around 100 to 150 people, all going through at the same time. Some people went into the wrong mortuary rooms. It was just a total mess. People were shouting, crying in the corridors, collapsing. When we entered the room, they said, you've got 30 minutes. Then they put her in a coffin. Then one after the other, the coffins were put into hearses, and that was it. These are things I'll never forget. Among the many other hardships faced by victims of the 2015 attacks, identification errors led some families to mourn corpses that were not their relatives. Six years on, efforts have been made to improve aid and support mechanisms for victims of terror attacks, be it immediate care or long-term follow-up. The Pitié Salpêtrière Hospital says it's learned from past mistakes. Mathieu Roux coordinated the reception of dozens of victims on the night of November 13th. Training staff in war medicine and crisis management, new IT systems and a unit dedicated to identifying victims are a few of the ways the hospital has reinforced its means to respond to potential mass attacks. The lesson we've learned goes beyond the hospital's organization, which is our field. We're now better equipped to identify victims and we have a better capacity to take care of them. We're not really talking about healthcare, we have solid experience in that. It's more about psychological support. And we've improved our way of supporting the relatives of victims within the hospital and even by helping to find them. We've also learnt to better support our staff because they too were victims of a form of trauma. Under the Ministry of Justice's supervision, the Interministerial Delegation for Victim Support coordinates public policies in this area. It strives to improve support and the long-term monitoring of victims and their families, particularly in regards to psychological help, compensation and return to work. New tools have also been deployed. In 2018, CNUS and CIVIC, two digital IT devices, were created. They are two victim identification systems that reduce errors, duplications, false alerts, and so on. And a decree has just been published on the creation of CVAC, which is the interministerial information system for victims of terrorism and disasters. This is the next step to improving information sharing systems. 
de partage d'informations entre eux. Il y a jusqu'à There are up to 11 different administrations and at least seven ministries that may be involved in the management of these mass attacks or natural disasters or any extremely serious event involving very many victims. Naturel, en tout cas, des événements extrêmement graves et impliquant de très nombreuses victimes. Another new feature is a crisis unit that can be activated by the Prime Minister or the Ministry of Home Affairs in the event of an attack, natural disaster or major accident. We got to film a simulation of the system in the event of a terrorist attack. I will make a notice about your mother. This is a call centre that responds to relatives of victims or victims of events. We have a system that allows us to have over 50 people respond immediately and if the number of calls requires more, we can bring in the Red Cross so we respond to the scale of the event. Arthur Denouveau is a survivor of the Bataclan attack and president of Life for Paris, an association for victims of the November 13th attacks. He's one of many who fought for better recognition of terror attack victim status in order to help facilitate procedures particularly for compensation and reimbursing medical expenses and psychological care. He will testify at the trial, which he says should also allow victims to turn a page. We really fought to make it easier for victims to obtain everything they're entitled to. Then we thought about how easy it is to become a victim. It happens very quickly, it's very passive. Does the state, does society, do victims really give us the means to stop being victims at some point so that we're not locked into this status for life? That was one of our main battles, but it's not necessarily over because there is a part that depends only on you. There must come a time when you're able to get rid of this label. For Jean-Pierre Albertini, whose son Stéphane was killed at the Bataclan, the real issues lie elsewhere. In this book, written as a tribute to his son, he also questions the actions taken to combat Islamic radicalism. There's a medal, a medal for victims of terrorism. When a state prefers to award medals to the idea of defeating a certain ideology, it's kind of admitting that it has reached a dead end. If you actually recognize the existence of victims, but you're unable to limit their number, well... Since 2017, several dozen jihadist terrorist attacks have been foiled in France and across Europe. After the bitter failure of the 2015 attacks perpetrated by individuals known to European intelligence services, serious efforts have been made, says this expert on international terrorism. We quickly realized that these networks are transnational, that borders are irrelevant to them, and that the important thing is to be able to exchange operational information with foreign counterparts. There's better cooperation now between states, and that's quite notable and important for the future. Above all, the terrorist organizations that threaten us have been considerably weakened by military offensives. The will of these groups to strike us still exists, and we know that, but we think that the risk is much lower today than the risk of a homegrown threat. A threat that puts the domestic intelligence services on the front line. In France, they've doubled in size since 2015.